edit that out. Shotgun. So, if any of you happen to have watched it, I um, posted a video last year where I had a Mossberg 930. I'd set it up with an 18-inch barrel, and I remember in that video saying it's not a Breda 1301. This is a Breda 1301. Uh, I got the Mossberg running right. Thought it was going to be a really good gun. Thought it was going to work out for me, and I'll probably link this to that video or that video to this video um it works great as long as it's dry and lubed if it gets wet she's done just done and i tried everything i tried heavy shells tried all that it um it did not work out i went on a trip where i made a bunch of extra money i um did a lot of soul searching for their thousand dollars was for a shotgun was something i wanted to spend and i'm going to tell you what guys i know it's a day in today's prices you can get an ar-15 for like 500 bucks a year ago that was not the case two years ago that was absolutely definitely not the case um it sucks that bretta will not get these out at the price they should um i bought this one on a giveaway price at buds for 650 dollars this is absolutely a $650 shotgun. It is absolutely a value for that. Um, I fired about 150 rounds through it so far, and I've yet to have a malfunction of any kind. Today, we will be shooting Winchester Universal, 108 ounce, 1200 per second, number eight shot. Um, I went to gunsmith after gunsmith after gunsmith after gunsmith asking the same question. What is the semi-auto shotgun that I should buy? The most common answer was if you want a gun that's going to last, you want a gun that's going to be reliable, you want a gun that's going to work for you, get a Beretta. Um, I love this thing. I get the fatal flaw. They've got a little piece of plastic that makes it where you have to actually press that button now. But other than that... I absolutely love this gun. Oh, without further ado, let's load it up and let's shoot it some. So, Winchester Universal, low brass. Ignore how tactical I'm not. Oh, it's supposed to be supposed to have like one of the fastest op the fastest operating system in the world or something. I am not too well fast to shoot. But to me, it's <laughs> like it doesn't feel like I'm ever waiting on the shotgun. All right. So, um, she's cool, guys. She's really cool. She's, um, I'm sorry I'm saying I'm a lot. It is what it is. I'm probably going to set this up as a police model. I like, kind of like that Abino stock. I don't know, man. This thing is, this thing is good. Like, it looks like cheap plastic, but it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. And, I mean, it just... feels really nice it's light thing weighs like six point something pounds empty seven something pounds loaded um this is what we are firing today and if it malfunctions i'll be amazed it um it really does seem to work it does And that's why a shotgun right there, I guess. It's just that ability to... And now, I'm going to talk a little bit about why a semi-auto over a pump. Why would I spend all the money on this 
versus a Mossberg 500, which is my favorite pump shotgun. If they would put a throw magazine like the um, Grim Mini 70 has, it'd be a perfect pump. I love a 500. I love an 870, but they're heavy. Um, but why this? Why, why spend the money on a semi-auto shotgun? Why don't we do something a pump cannot do right now? That right there is a great reason. Um, semi-auto can be fired one-handed. You can do a pump, but you ain't doing it that fast. You're not going to be in the fight. You're going to be getting maybe one round off and praying to God that round hits because I can get an, I can get a 500 and demonstrate some some techniques, but none of them are good. I mean, I don't want to be down one arm in a fight, but the history of self-defense is long. It exists. There is lots of stories of people who have defended their homes, and more than a few of those guys and gals have been shot before they knew they were in a fight, or hit with a baseball bat, or a pry bar, or stab, or something, and left for dead, and then they got their gun and they came back into the fight. That happens. Um, I'm still learning the manual of arms on this gun, so. Like, absolutely that happens. So, that's, one reason I really like a semi-auto. If you can get a semi-auto, if you can afford a semi-auto, you get a semi-auto. And if you can afford a thousand dollars for a shotgun or you can catch one on sale, get a Breda 9, a Breda 1301. Um, they're just, it's, it's a great gun. Another reason, and I know this is kind of weird, but you get down, you get thrown with a pump. This gets really hard to do, you know? That is it's really difficult with a pump, man. You know, even getting them kneeling. And why would you want to kneel? Well, what if you want to get down urban phone? You know. What if you're moving? You know, what if you're what if you're shooting out from under cover? What if you're what if you're in a gunfight? For real. I mean I don't claim to be a combat guy, I'm not. I've never been in a gunfight, I've been in a lot of simulated gunfights. Um and when you start doing shit like Missed. That's the shit you do. Paintball, airsoft, anybody's ever played it. You do that shit a lot. Um, you know, freaking fire, man. Freaking fire's a thing. That's a thing you do. It again. What you do? Hmm. 
Do it with a pump. Try it. Give it a whirl. Pumps are just as good as semi auto standing. That's it. As soon as you start dropping, they, as soon as you get lower to the ground, they fall on their face. So, and that kind of running, that kind of shooting on the run, shooting from awkward positions, that is, I've had to do it in simulated combat, so when the rounds going back and forth aren't going to kill you, I'm, I've had to get under stuff, I've had to get sideways. I can actually remember commenting, like, I've never used kneeling in a paintball fight, ever. And I played with pumps in the woods, so don't throw speedball shit at me. Um, I've used prone. I've used prone a lot. I've used standing a lot. I've used shooting out under a tree branch somehow. And I get in that position a lot. And that's why those two things are what this has over a pump. In awkward positions, I can, I can get into those awkward positions. And as long as I can get on the trigger, as long as I can do that, as long as I can do that, she's going to fire. Um, as long as I can get my sight alignment, I will hit what I'm aiming at most of the time. Running across a thing, firing, I may just be trying to put somebody down. This is bird shot. Throw buckshot at somebody like that and over a greater distance. And, you know, you've, you've got something. I hope to God I never have to do it for real. If I had to do it for real, this is probably one of the weapons I would really want in my arsenal. And that's why I own it. Um, pumps are great if that's what you can afford. But if you can afford a bit more, something like this. Look, at this is really nice. And if you're more of an all-around shotgunner, spend the $1,000. They got the Breda 1301 comp, 24-inch barrel. That's probably the best all-in-one gun you can get. Um, you would spend 800 on an AR. You would sure as hell spend 800 on a top end AR. You'd spend 1,000 on a top end AR. What's the difference? Really? It's more useful. <coughs> I don't edit videos. If y'all ever start following me, that's fine. I'll make content as I can. I'm not here to make money on YouTube. I'm here to actually put out, like, this is my experience. This is my quest to the right collection. And right now it's Smith and Wesson MPs and CMMG, ARs, and Brad Shotguns. And Mossberg. I, I've got to claim Mossberg. I, I absolutely, if I was with a pump, I'd have a Mossberg 500. I've had a Mossberg 500. I adored it. It ruined me on steel receiver shotguns. Um, <laughs> if your shotgun weighs more than your AR, you have a problem. Unless you got a really lightweight AR. Breda, make an AR. Do what you did with this. This thing is ridiculous. It's... Apparently these things last, but everything, every spacer, every piece of non-stressed material in this thing is polymer. The rest of it is hard steel. It's freaking amazing. That's some coating on it. It's got some coating on it. Great. That action is that action is slick, man. Compared to that knife, they're like a knife is click 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 clunk. This thing is just butter. I can feel the hammer and that's it. It's, just, it's a pleasure. It's just crack it. Uh, Crossbolt safety. I got into the Mossberg tank safety. With this stock, the tank safety would be great. The tank safety on this gun would be so fine. Um, but I'm probably going to put a pistol grip stock on it. This is nice because it's right here. When I was coming off my shoulder, every time I came off, I used the safety. It's, it's natural. It, it makes sense. Um, I was going to show you, but I don't. The way I store it is I put it... I put on safe, put the rounds in it, hit the button here, puts around on the lifter. If I need it in the middle of the night, wham, it's there. So, and I've tested that. I'm getting used to that. But it's going to stay. It, it's going to be my shotgun. I'm probably going to spend the money. I'm going to have a really expensive shotgun. It is what it is. I'm probably going to buy a 24-inch barrel for this for the uh, 1301 TAC, or 1301 COMP, my bad. Um, just because I do some shotgun stuff and I actually want to have that option. It's probably going to get in my stashable stock. I haven't decided yet. I like the Abino and the Mossberg 930, but this is a good stock. Um, anybody want to comment on their experience with that, feel free. 
guys who put Magpul stocks on this, you're wasting your time. Why? Aren't the pulls about the same on this? They got spacers. This is just as good. Like, the grip on this thing will tear your skin off. Um, and this is, like, it's solid, man. It's This is some of the most rigid, solid polymer, feeling polymer I have ever felt in my life. But this thing feels tight. It just, it feels, it doesn't flex in your hands. It's good. Um, Trigger's amazing. I've never felt a trigger like that on a shotgun before. Like, we're not even talking about the 930 compared to this. The 930 was mush with more mush mixed in. It's mush and it fired when you put somewhere in the mush. This feels like a handgun trigger. Like, legitimately. Click. Now it, um, and I've noticed where other triggers do this. Reset. Nice audible tactile reset. And break. Well, reset it doesn't break it it's a smooth pull through and I know a lot of guys like that break I don't I actually like this I like the way these feel where my Max wife's Breta PX4 did the same thing it was just like you squoze through the trigger and you felt the stack and then it's just an even pull through it almost like a very very light double action over a very small area and I like that. I can hit. I can hit, hit some target with that gun. I just cannot do with anything else. Um, and just me personally, I tend to when I hit that wall, I feel like I'm struggling against it. That's me. That's that's just a personal preference thing. Trigger is amazing. It's metal. Um, trigger guard's polymer, but so it's trigger guard on Glock. Really good polymer. I think this is glass reinforced nylon or some shit like that. If you break this trigger guard, you're going to break the gun. Um, this assembly is super easy. Everything's captive. It's not like an Mossberg 930 where you got a bunch of uncapped springs. There's nothing in the buttstock. All of your shit is up here. Your, your one big operating spring that allows that to come back and forth, it's up here. So, just, that's just butter. It's up here. The gun's nice and light. Um, there's polymer parts in the gun but they're not stressed every gunsmith I've talked to says these will last outlast anything you fire um, A400s are really popular with 4H kids in the area they put a lot of rounds through a gun um, I don't know what to say if you're on the fence about it don't be get it end of story um, I wish the aftermarket would kind of support it a little bit better I'd like something with an adjustable length, like a, and I don't know that ATI doesn't make it. ATI has a key to stock, or like Mossberg's Flex, those kind of adjustable stocks, that'd be really nice on this. Especially considering I'm going to use this as an all-purpose shotgun when I get a, a proper all-purpose barrel for it. It's got a plastic quick rail, I guess they're new, they're, poly they're metal now, don't give a shit. Um, the sight is polymer, if you break this sight, you're going to break the gun. Um, Got a polymer surround thing. I think it's metal here. I actually don't know if it's metal or polymer. Don't really care. I haven't zeroed it with slugs. I will. It's got the weird European you shine your flashlight on at night sight bullshit up front. Um, I think that's horse shit. I think if you're going to have a nice sight up here, it's vitridium. I don't need to charge my front sight. Um, and it would really be nice to have a night sight on it. It's. Metal magazine follower, it's chrome line barrel, it's quality, 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 quality. I just can't say it enough. Um, it feels good in your hand. It does. It feels, it's the best feeling shotgun I've ever had. Um, you know, it's chambered for three inch magnums. You can get any white magic slug, three inch mags. You know, there's a movie coming out, Jurassic World, and it's totally irrelevant, and maybe it's because of my newest gun, but no, I've actually sat down and thought about it. If you were to draw, if I had to do that shit for real, like, hey, you're going to an island with a shit ton of, of, of dinosaurs, everything from, like, yay tall to T-Rex, and they're going to eat you if they can. Um, probably take a shotgun. I'd probably take this shotgun um, because I could do everything from hose, you know, a wall of small animals at close range with number four buck and just fuck shit up 
to a Burkini Black Magic Slug and I can hit something big with probably the most lethal projectile so that you can fire short of 50 cal. It's really man portable. Um, apply that to real world. You know, some of you guys up from Alaska live out in places. Well, I got bears around here. I got black bears. I've seen black bears on this property. Um, that's always fun when you're out for a walk and you've got your little your little MP shield and a little baby black bear runs in front of you. You're like, nope, calling a friend. Um, or going back the way I came, one. But, you know, we got bears here. We got coyotes here. We got squirrels here. Survival. Um, you know, this was that was universal <laughs> number eight shot. Now, she's a cylinder bore shotgun, so this may be more geared towards your 1301, 1301 comp. 1301 comp has a 20 has a 21 or 24 inch barrel. I tend to think that 21 inch barrel 1301 comp would be the absolute best all around shotgun in the world. I'm not going to buy that barrel. I'm going to buy a 24 inch barrel because we got an 18. I kind of sort of wanted this receiver and did I mention I got this for 650 it was on sale um, I kind of wanted this receiver I'm just I'm not that into competition and there's some differences in the way they set up the receiver but that being said I'm sure the comp is just an amazing firearm um, but back to survival if you had a 1301 comp with choke tubes or if you maybe had this machine for a choke tube but god that just seems like a anyway um bretta choke choke tube give it a fucking choke tube anyway sorry um you know if you had to survive and you had a good bit of game load you know maybe your number six stuff some some double op buck and some slugs you know you could hunt any opportune game that came across your path as long as you have pineapple ammo and it's a 12 gauge shotgun do you, with the will fire almost everything do you know how much 12 gauge is out there um if i was a small airplane pilot i've done some i've, I've ridden around some small airplanes in the northwest and you know in an area where we're talking moose we're talking brown bears we're talking ground squirrels we're talking everything if I had to walk out, this would be my walkout bet. With the 21 inch barrel. With a choke tube. And because a foster slug will do it, it will stop a moose in its tracks if you put them in the right place. A bikini slug will definitely do it. It's got the penetration, that hardened, that hard cast hardened lead. It's good shit. Um, that's not a scientific term. I actually have a whole lot of knowledge about how the thing works. It's good shit. You know, again, number four buck, number six game load. You can kill a jackrabbit and not tear it to shit, which you're going to do with an AR-15. Um, you can kill a moose. You know, you... I tend to like the idea of how tanks do it. Um, and bear in mind, you can easily load, rack, and press. Um, that being said, sorry with the alms, the way I would do it, and this is just me personally, I like the way tanks do it. It takes longer to get rid of this, but just shoot it, jam your, hey, there's a moose looking at me cross, I jam my, grab my, jam my slug in, if he charges, f fire, fire. Semi-auto, doesn't require a lot of cleaning from what I understand, I can't speak to that, I haven't put enough rounds through it. I will say that I pulled out of the box, did not clean it, fired 25 rounds of low brass federal through it, decided it didn't need oil, so I stripped all the oil out of it with a paper towel. So I wiped it down with dry paper towels to get all the oil off, then put another 750-ish rounds through it, and then it started raining, and I kept shooting in the rain, because of the Mossberg 930, and it just kept doing that. And then I got really kind of frustrated with it because it wouldn't stop, and I wasn't in the, you know, the excitement I get with my 930 where I can jam things down the barrel to knock shells out. So I threw it in a mud puddle and pulled it out and it still didn't stop. So um, it's yet to have a stoppage. I've got about 200 rounds through it right now. Um, maybe about 225. I haven't really been counting. I have cleaned it because it's brand new and I filled it full of mud and water. Um, but walkout gun, yeah. Yeah, I would.
absolutely would. I'd want a 22 inch barrel with a choke tube, or 21 inch barrel with a choke tube for that purpose, just because, you know, if I, if I see a bird flying by that I want to eat, I want to be able to get it. And this, I just feel like more than about 15 yards away, it ain't happening. Um, same thing, if I see a jackrabbit over at that tree over there, I want to get him. But I also wanted more of a tactical gun. I hate that word. If I start doing tactical shit in real world, things have gotten really bad. <laughs> Holy hell, they've gotten horrible. I had one opportunity one time. I volunteered for it. I didn't get to go. Um, and they would they did do some tactical stuff. But even that was like, go pat down these these um, third country nationals at the gate and try not to get killed because Al-Qaeda in Iraq is going to drive by and do drive-bys on you. Welcome to modern war. Alright, so I'll shut up. It's it's a great shotgun. Buy it. If you don't buy it, buy a Mossberg 500 because if you can't afford a Mossberg 500, get a job. Um, I don't know what to say. So, have a good day, guys. Bye. Sorry about the rambling.